Good morning, students. Today we are going to discuss on the topic of cost to company and its component. What had been the recapitulations? We had discussed the concept of compensation. The various forms of compensation was explained, and the pay model was discussed with its three main component. What is going to be objective of today's session? We are going to discuss the meaning of cost to company, which is also called as CTC. To discuss the components of CTC and to understand the factors which influence compensation. How would we define cost to company? It is defined as the total cost of employment for an individual employee. Whenever anyone is issued an offer letter, there is CTC which not only includes gross compensation payable but it also includes both monetary and non-monetary benefits. And it is not that CTC is same for every company. Rather, it varies from company to company depending on its policies. Before we begin to know the component of CTC, we have to understand what is base pay. Base pay is the main component while designing compensation packages. It is actually the pay which is being considered while considering your standard job duties, roles and skills. Other added on benefits on compensations vary with regard to base pay. So whatever your benefits and other allowances or other variable benefits are, it's calculated on your base pay. Generally, the top-ups on the base pay are known as variables. And variables are often linked with how you are performing in an organization. Other benefits like provident fund, gratuity, etc. are statutory in nature, while others are voluntary. In similar to CTC, base pay design and calculation also varies from organization to organizations and are designed strategically. So basically, before we come to design the compensation, what are the philosophy or what are the principles on which compensation works? First of all, compensation is designed in such a manner so as to attract and retain the best talent. It is to pay as per market rate for employees who are meeting the desired performance and to pay 20% above market rate if some employees is exceeding the expectation and is doing tremendously well in their performance. Compensation is also designed in order to gain competitive advantage. Internal equity in compensation plans. To make provision for reward system. To develop internal financial strength. And to achieve competency and performance based compensation. To follow legal procedures. What are the components of CTC? CTC or cost to company is the total expenditure that the company incurs on its employees. In simple word, it is the total amount of salary credited into the account of an employee in question. It includes basic components such as basic pay, kind allowances, various reimbursement, etc. that increase the remuneration of the employee. In addition, there are also many components such as provident fund, gratuity, bonus pay, which are also listed in salary description too. We need to understand the amount at which they start their jobs does not actually get credited into the account. When we talk of CTC, whatever is the amount, 
there are a lot of deductions which happens and then the net income is what gets credited into your account therefore ctc is gross salary plus pf plus gratuity the term basic salary is the minimum fixed compensation which is being given to employee for his or her work it constitutes at least 40 to 60% of your ctc structure it is calculated by keeping all your benefits and bonuses aside employees need to understand that the basic salary is dependent upon your designation talking about monetary allowances whenever we hear allowances it obviously brings a huge smiles on the face of us not only it adds to the income but it also adds on to the psychological well-being of a person the allowances are provided in addition to the basic pay of employee every employees will receive allowances which are calculated on certain percentage so various forms of allowances or various types of allowances are house rent allowance this allowance is paid by employer to care of expenditure related to the rented facility of employee dearness allowance this is provided to tackle the situations of inflation in the economy it can be referred to as emergency fund for employees however this is only provided in public sector and government enterprises some private companies may allow leave travel allowance as the term says it is given to cover the traveling charges of employees it doesn't cover your accommodation food and other preliminary other preliminary expenses what is conveyance allowance it is same as lta however it covers the charges which takes it from uh, covering your uh, daily commutation from your work to uh, work, uh, work to your house several reimbursement this section comprises all the expenses incurred by employees on your business trip it is to be understood that those expenses are meant to conduct the employer's task therefore these are being paid back to employees however whenever you are reimbursing your bills you have to have your proper bills which should be submitted as a proof when you return from your business trip apart from all these allowances there are special allowances like medical hospitality food coupons per diem incentives etc so these allowances are indirectly increasing the increment of employee class it should be observed that every company has its own allowance policy therefore there is no set structure or specific numbers put up by any particular industry provident fund scheme is also there this is the investing scheme whereby both employer and employees they contribute a certain sum of money in the employee benefits this amount is accessible only after the retirement of a person gratuity is also there this is being paid to the employers when an employee covers a period of 5 years this is also one of the benefits when the person retires health insurance one of the initiative taken by employers is to look after the well-being of its employees however it is not necessary that every company follow this insurance tax liability there are two kinds of taxes income tax which is a tax that is paid out of employee salary every month the salary is credited into account of employee after deducting the income tax that's why this tax is also termed as tds or tax deduction at source on the other hand there is one more tax known as professional tax which is charged by state government 
for allowing you to carry out your certain profession within the territory. So how are we going to calculate total gross salary or total net salary? It is your basic pay plus allowances minus employee provident fund and minus taxes both including professional tax and TDS. So after this is being deducted from your basic pay and allowances, whatever salary or net salary that will be credited into your account. So these are the references from which the session has been taken from. Thank you students.